Hello everybody out there in YouTube land, my name is Steve, the channel is Media Hype Train, and in today's video I come to you on behalf of our development team for Microsoft Flight Simulator, Hype Performance Group. So if you've been around the channel for a while, you're probably familiar with our Icon A5 mod and a couple of the other aircraft mods that we have released for Microsoft Flight Simulator in the past, but most recently we've become pretty well known for our Airbus H135 helicopter, being that it was the first native helicopter brought over to the sim. So today, I'm going to give you guys a preview. It's been, I want to say, two or three weeks since we did that first announcement trailer, and we've already got this up and running. So I want to show you all the progress that we've made since that very original update, um, you know, that .5 version that first came out, and also give you a bit of a tutorial along with some of the dev tips that we have from our development team. So one cool thing I'll say right away is that we've been supported massively by the community of creators out there. On FlightSim.tia, we have over 50 deliveries available right now. As I go through this uh, list here, a lot of notable creators there. The most notable, of course, is going to be Crispy136, who is a developer on our team. Uh, he's helped out with a lot of projects in the community in the past. I would say probably most notable for him prior to us was the DA62, the DA40 repaints that he did. Um, but he's absolutely phenomenal, and I will be using his livery today, the Sheriff's Department livery for uh, Los Angeles there, because we have a bit of a special mission. So again, like I said, we've been supported by the community very well. Um, the helipad that I'll be taking off from today is the LA County Sheriff Lakewood Helipad 50CL, which was released by York77. Great member of our community, has done a lot of work, and this is one of six helipads that are released in his pack that you should be seeing on screen right now, available for free from flightsim.to. But yeah, we have a special mission. So today we need to take a informant from the Los Angeles area to Fullerton Airport so they can get out of here because they're going to be helping with a case and we need to keep them safe until then. Uh, one point that I'll make out here just for you guys before we start the video. Uh, one thing that you want to do with our mod is recommended that you start from a parking spot or ramp, something like that. Don't start from an actual runway because the aircraft will start um, actually with everything live but if you start from a parking spot you'll have a perfect cold and dark start so as I said we're gonna be taking a short hop and once we get into the sim we'll do our pre-flight checks we're gonna include some of the known issues that we know about and some tutorial tips to get you started I'll see you guys on the other side alrighty so here we are at that beautiful airport that I told you guys about from York um, so let's go ahead and get inside of this bad boy So first things first, before we even get to the pre-flight checks, I want to go into the controls menu, give you guys a tip, and also talk about one of the biggest problems that we see most people have when they come over to the Discord channel. So one of the big issues that a lot of people will have is saying, hey, it doesn't feel like my throttle input is working correctly, um, it's going up and down, X, Y, Z, whatever the case may be. Um, what we found is that a lot of people who may fly um, multi-engine aircraft, um, maybe even the airliners. You might have a split throttle that you're using and you have that throttle map the control like maybe throttle one, throttle two. For the work properly with our H135, you do need to just use throttle axis. So what you'll do is you'll come into your control menu here, go right up to search, that throttler, throttle axis. And as you can see here, I've got mine this is my uh, throttle quadrant right here. Not a quadrant, since there's only two, but anyway, you know what I meant. And I've got mine just mapped to have the control or the whole unit move down. So that's how I control my throttle axis. And the reason we did this is so that you can easily control your other airplanes. Excuse me. So you can control your other airplanes without having to make too many modifications in the actual control menu. I personally own a ton of add-on aircraft, and I can say that I haven't really had to change many of my settings whatsoever, but if you do find yourself in a situation where you need to change something specifically just so that it works with the H135, what I would always recommend, and I mean, not even recommend, I would say it's pretty much necessary, unless you're a map man and you want to go in here and switch your settings up manually every chime, every chime, every time, go to Preset Manager. So what you can do is whatever you have currently mapped, if you only need to change a couple of things, just go ahead and hit duplicate. 
And what this is doing is we're taking our current settings, we're creating a duplicate profile. We're gonna rename this profile to whatever we want, just something specific to helicopters so we know that. And now we've got a helicopter profile set here. So we can do this so that we can change things specifically for how we wanna control the helicopter. And then whenever you wanna fly different aircraft, it's as easy as changing it back to your default profile. Now you do need to repeat this uh, for anything that you're changing. You know, if it's a setting you're changing on the keyboard for the helicopter, you need to repeat the same process I just showed you of making a preset, but it's still very, very useful to use. All right, so let's go ahead and get out of here. One thing I would recommend again, just make sure that you check the FAQ section on our Discord or on the flightsim.to page. That way you can see any of the other control. Um, if there's anything else that's kind of odd, we've probably noted it there somewhere in the FAQ. So let's go ahead and show you guys how to get started from being cold and dark. Here's that special informant that I told you guys about that we need to keep safe and get over to that regional airport. So first things first, let's go ahead and turn on our battery switch. So one thing I'll notice the G3000 pops up here. The very first time that you install our H135 or when you're coming to a new update, we always recommend, you know, clear out the old folder version when installing, install the new folder completely. Um, but anyway, once you've done that, this takes about maybe 60 to 90 seconds for our technology to load that controls some of the flight mechanics. What you'll see is at the top of the screen here, and I'll actually put an image on the screen for you guys now as well. You'll just see a warning that says, you know, do not fly. The module basically is still loaded. You'll also see that same warning here where our flight model button is. So this will be red and it'll say do not fly. So let's talk about those flight models. Our H135 currently has three flight models that it goes with or that it ships with. We have basic, which is the most responsive version or is a more responsive version of the Xbox mode that I'll take you to here in a second and it lacks many of the dynamic helicopter effects. So actually, let me start from the beginning here. So here's our Xbox mode. This is um, this mode has le the least responsive controls and it's optimized for Xbox thumbsticks. The reason why it has lesser responsiveness is because with the thumbsticks, you obviously have a larger scope of movement there. So to counteract that, we go ahead and we decrease that responsiveness for you. That way you're not flying all over the place or not jerking all over the place. Moving on to basic mode, this mode is more responsive when compared to the Xbox mode. And like I said before, it lacks many of the dynamic helicopter effects. And then finally we have our advanced mode. What this mode does is it introduces engine torque and more subtle dynamic effects that all add up to help this make or to help make this aircraft feel like a real life helicopter. Um, and when we talk about that engine torque, basically what that means is as you know, as you're flying, you're gonna get this movement that is gonna to wanna to pull the plane to the right. So you're gonna need to counteract that with, you know, with a left pedal, or if you have a joystick with the twist, then you'll counteract that with the left twist. And that simulates your rudder because you need to turn against the torque to keep the aircraft, I keep saying aircraft, but to keep the helicopter moving in a straight line. All right, so let's go ahead and continue on with just a little bit more description of what we got here on the lower PFD before we move on to the actual start. So our avionics, we do have synthetic vision available. Ta-da. Timer works. Weather, the way that works here, you're gonna click that and it's gonna pull the weather overlay onto the center display. If you want to turn the weather off, go in here. And if you want to change the weather settings, click in there twice. You can go to change the settings there, go to horizontal or go to vertical. I personally don't need it. I think um, most of the time, most helicopters are flying VFR. If we get into IFR conditions, I'm probably going to try to find a place to land very quickly anyway. But this is good if you have to go into a tricky area for some reason. But as I said, I'll turn that off. Minimums, this may have been broken in some videos that you've seen on YouTube previously or if you've watched some Twitch streamers, but this has now been fixed. Next, we have our bearing. So for this, let's go ahead and get the FMS. And there we go. 
So Tano, it works. Uh, speed bugs. And of course, we've got all the other flight plan type uh, items that you would expect. So let's get on to the fun stuff. Let's go ahead and turn our exterior power on there. Um, at some point, I would love to get this connected to the ground, uh, ground power supply. Um, right now, it's not, but still, this is very useful for you guys who use VATSIM, um, virtual airlines, any of that kind of stuff where you need that realism uh, to trigger maybe some type of um, response in those external programs that you're using. We do have all that stuff in here for you as well. Standby battery is going to come in useful if you find yourself in a situation where you need that power. So how do we get started? So generator one is already on. Let's go ahead, click on our engine one there. It's a good time to show off this incredible EIS that Dave has made. So of course, just like a real engine, we want to wait for our oil pressure to get where it needs to be. Still some work to do on the sounds, but I am more happy with it with every update that we get. Alrighty, so we've got green on our engine one. Let's go ahead and get the same going for engine two. And I'm going to keep this uh, flight for daytime for us right now, just because I don't feel like messing around with the time settings. but. We've got some really great lighting in here as well. So panel lights were added in a recent update. You can kind of see those going on and off there now. I'm going to turn them off since we're in daytime. And cabin lights were also added. So these cabin lights actually show up in the passenger area as well. Very cool. All right, let's go ahead and get our FADEC on now. So this is going to control. Whoop. And guess what I forgot the guy what I forgot to do guys so I'm glad that kind of happened and I'm also embarrassed that it happened at the same time but one of the things that you should always do when loaded into a flight with the helicopter wiggle your throttle before you start your whole engine uh, startup um, that way just so you can make sure that nothing crazy like that happens sometimes I think the sim itself may get stuck on what your last throttle setting was when you exit the sim so just wiggle it a bit bring it down to zero that way once the engines and the fade act kick in you don't go taken off like that. All right, but anyway, FedEx loaded up now. I am going to turn our auxiliary power off. I am going to turn our taxi lights on, our strobe, our beacon, nav is already on, and our Piot is going on as well. I'm going to release the parking brake and let's get going. Do we want to get going? Is there anything else I need to show you guys? I feel like I'm forgetting something. You know what? There is one more thing, but I'll show you when we land. Oop. And as you guys can see, so there's that torque effect that we were talking about there. Let me get up some altitude first, and then I'm going to release my rudder here. That way you guys can see it for yourself. Love Los Angeles. Very, very scenic place to fly. I hope they get another pass, though. Um, at some point but for the most part it's pretty well so let me go to the outside view very quickly to show you guys this I'm going to turn my rudder off but I'm not going to speak because the engine is going to be pretty loud great so that's with advanced mode on that is what you're going to have to rudder against to keep yourself going level as I said previously and then um I mentioned this earlier as well. There's some other little subtle effects. If you want to get extreme detail on that, hop over into our Discord. Um, you can tag at developers, and one of those guys will respond and let you know exactly what the other effects are that are added as well. So one thing about this, it is advanced. Um, definitely takes a little bit more skill and attention to fly. For the most part because I like to be a scenic flyer, meaning that I'm just really flying to kind of chew up the scenery, take a look at everything that's down below and all that good stuff. I like to fly on basics, so I'm going to go to that. And now I don't have to manage the rudder anymore. 
until I actually really need it. So you can see no frame rate drops or anything like that. I'm very proud of that, especially because all the avionics are completely custom. Yes, they're built on top of some existing tech, but they're custom because really our developers um, and Dave specifically just spent a ton of time working on these, taking community feedback. That's why we, you know, we really kind of put that link out there all the time regarding the Discord channel because it really is what's helped us get to the point that we're at today um, with the progress of with the progress of the helicopter. We would have never gotten to this point if it wasn't for that Discord channel because there's some people, you know, like uh, Zan who have joined the team who we may have never met if it wasn't for Discord. So having people passionate about that in the community has been a tremendous help to us. Very thankful for that. And what you can see now, the frame rate drops that are happening now are not due to the helicopter at all. Um, we're not going at a crazy speed to where the render engine or render engine shouldn't be able to keep up. What's happening here is there's something wrong with the actual flight sim engine. And I've noticed this only in California recently. Drop in the comments if you've seen it happening elsewhere. would be kind of interested to know maybe if there's some type of... Um, parallel collusion or collusions <laughs> parallel conclusions to draw there for why it's happening but yeah this is bad there shouldn't be that much pop in uh, for reference I'm on a 2080 Ti and an i9 9900K 32 gigabytes of RAM all that good stuff play at 1440p so I'm not even pushing the uh, the 4k uh, for this specific run here I'm going to start bringing that collective down now. So um, that's one thing I probably, I don't think I mentioned that earlier in the video. Although you're still manipulating your throttle, remember that the FADEC is actually manipulating the, uh, the engine RPM. So what you're controlling with your throttle is the helicopter's collective. Your normal trim is actually controlling the pitch of the rotor. So that's your rotor trim. That's what you should call that there. I didn't spend enough time on the EIS because um, there's really a lot of good work that went into it. But you can see here, you know, we've got the voltage, we've got our stored amps, all that good stuff. All righty, and I'm bringing in a good speed here. And I said there was one thing I need to show you guys. There's actually two things that I need to show you as I think about this. If there's anything that I didn't cover in this video, I'm sorry. Um, I tried to think of the basic questions that I see the most in the Discord and what I see in the comments. A lot of times you guys have unique problems that we're able to resolve pretty quickly. So if you have anything like that, I know I've said this probably three other times in the video, but absolutely stress coming over to our Discord channel is the quickest way to get any type of troubleshooting because the devs are pretty active there throughout the day. Um, I think we're all on different time zones, so one of us is always pretty much available to respond to something. And the other big thing there is just that we do updates there a ton quicker and more frequently than we do on FlightSim.to. The reason being that a lot of these bills are test bills, and we want to get the feedback from the community before we put it out to the public. We think that the people on the Discord, they're obviously the most invested people in the project because they're there with us. They're giving us their feedback daily and things like that. So it only makes sense that if we're going to have um, anyone give us feedback on the project, it's going to be those people who were there with us and able to give it to us in a quick manner because we can push a fix out very quickly and have you guys test it and, you know, knock it off our list. Whereas if we put it on flightsim.to and we're waiting for a while, a lot of times we're dealing with comments that, aren't related to anything in the actual uh, the actual patch that we just put out. So yeah, come to Discord. But here we are. Um, so here's the other thing I was telling you guys about. If you look right here, ta-da! You've got your ling, your langing. This will help you guys see where the momentum of the H135 is, and this should help you land better. Oop. So. I'm a perfectionist. I always try to get right here on the H. I'm not going to make it this time, am I? I'm just slowly bringing my collective down. Oop, actually, not slow enough. All right. So I got on the H, not the right one. 
Oh, man. I was going so well, too, until I started drifting there at the end. But hey, guys. So, that was the first cool thing. Got our land-in alignment system here that you can use. Or as it's affectionately called in the Discord channel, the Magic Green Ball. We've got our formant here safely. We've got some work to do, though, so let's go ahead and get these engines turned off. First things first, let's get our parking brake on. Whoops. Don't report me to the fizzos. I forgot to turn my lane and brakes on, or my lane and lights on. That's a bad one, but let me go ahead and turn my taxi lights off now that we're sitting here. Don't need nav lights anymore. I'll keep the strobe and the beacon on. Piat heat can go off. Let's turn your fade deck off. Love that sound. So good. All right, let's go ahead and get engine one off now. All right, and here we go. Just waiting for that oil to hit zero. That's good to go. Generator one off. Now let's go for two. Demo, that was off. Generator two off now. Here comes the magic, ladies and gentlemen. Battery off. And just like that, we had a nice little eight minute flight. It's that simple, folks. Yes, I really have 522 hours of flight time in the sim. Look how drastically uh, different my takeoffs versus landings are though. So that says a lot. At night, I seem to do pretty well, but Anyway, guys, really appreciate you, but we're not done here yet. I said I have one more thing to show you. So we have contact points for you to open the door very easily. Just like that. You know what, while we're here, let's go ahead and chew up the scenery a bit. So let me show you guys the custom cameras that we just added in, courtesy of Archer. Thank you so much, buddy. Give me a second here. Yep. Sorry, I had a... Had went off screen for a second there but yep uh, Archer 374 helped us out with these cameras so very good job we've got the passenger camera we've got the switch camera now we've got the lower panel camera and like I said there on the pilot we've got the pilot and then we've also got this one which actually probably would have been very useful for me just now with trying to do this landing and then man this is a great airport too love Fullerton let's also Give some props to Crispy here. Look at this. Oh my goodness, man. Um, this rotor cap here, that's not Crispy's fault. That's our fault. We are missing the emissive texture that will make that glossy. So that's going to be coming in another update. We're very close to the 1.0 status, guys. And that is what we're probably uh, kind of considering our biggest update yet. That's going to be the one where we're like, hey, this is something we're ready to put. I won't say if we're ready to put our name on it. We've already put our name on it, but we're ready to put a ring on it, you know? Some of you guys aren't going to get that joke, but it's okay. Um, anyway, though, look at this. It is a very beautiful livery that he's done. He's done, I want to say, three packs for us at this point, plus he's done some special requests for the community, some special requests for content creators and things like that. I cannot control a camera for anything. Whoop, whoop, whoop. But yeah, this is very good. Um, sneak peek stuff. We've got a baggage area coming in very soon, so that'll be in one of the upcoming updates. And like I said, we're going to have that rotor cap up top updated. Big thing, guys. So if you like this helicopter, please support the channel by coming over to us. I said support the channel, but yeah, support the channel. It's really one-on-one -on -one with the project at this point. Um, you know, those guys are, we're all one big happy team at this point. But yeah, support the channel, support us, Hype Performance Group by going to flightsim.to, downloading this helicopter for yourself, leaving us a five-star review. If there's something you want to see get fixed, click the link in the description of this video or over on flightsim.to and join our Discord channel. Give a chat with us and the developers over there. Chat with the community. We're doing group flights, 
Sometimes we have screenshot contests. We've been doing a lot of cool stuff, honestly. Um, as much as this is a helicopter project, it's also been kind of a project to build a small community that has uh, kind of grown up out of this project. So made some friends and would love to keep growing it. I've talked so much in this video. It's crazy. Love you guys. Thanks for the support. Hope to see you in the next video.